Hi all, Lee Veris here with uh, the next Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between, including AI. Anyway, today I'll be looking at AI upscalers that represent an incredible new way to enhance low-res imagery. We'll look at Topaz Photo AI and compare that with Photoshop's native upscaling algorithm, as well as a new kid on the block, Magnific, a web-based AI platform for upscaling that offers some unique creative features for AI image enhancement. Okay, let's dig in. Okay, so we're uh, going to start here in Photoshop. I have an image uh, that I've actually downsampled. This was a, a, a shot from uh, our Tuscany photo adventure, and it's uh, on the villa property that we stay at. Anyway, I really like this shot. It has some interesting leading lines and all. And I want to compare how upscaling works in these different AI upscalers versus Photoshop. So first, let's go ahead and upscale this. Uh, I've downsampled this image to 1080 pixels in the long dimension. So it's fairly low res here and uh, maybe good enough for a 3.5 by 2.5 inch print. Uh, so we're going to upscale this and we'll, we'll go, uh, we'll use Photoshop's native upscaling. So we're going to go image size, image, image size. And uh, we'll take a look here at, um, you know, it tells us the pixel dimensions. We're going to use preserve details too. This is the latest algorithm for upscaling that, that Photoshop offers us. So we'll have that selected here. Uh, we're going to go 400%. So we'll end up with a file that's 4320 by 2880. It's roughly 4K. So this will display very nicely on a, on a high-res monitor, big, big screen TV or something like that. So anyway, let's go ahead and upscale it. And of course, Photoshop works pretty quickly. And now we have, uh, we have this upscaled version. Now, we're going to compare this to Topaz AI. So let's, let's look at that. Topaz Photo AI, this is their latest sort of Swiss Army knife photo enhancer. And what I've got on the left-hand side is the original, which is only 1080 in, in the long dimension. And we're comparing it now to upscaling. So let's let's figure out exactly how this all works. So here we're in uh, Topaz Photo AI, and they have this little upscaling section here. We're going to go ahead and take this all the way to four times. And uh, we're going to use the defaults here. Um, but we're going to we're going to say this is a low res image. So let's make sure we use the AI model that's for low res. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen this. So we'll click on sharpen. And you can kind of see right off the bat that Topaz is doing a pretty amazing job here, um, adding detail where there really is almost nothing, right? So uh, pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and, and save that image. And I'm going to go back into Photoshop now. And we're going to compare this. We're going to compare um, the Topaz AI to the original scaled up uh, version of the image. So let me go ahead and bring this up. I'm going to go to 200% just so we can really see what's going on here. And we'll just sort of pick a representative area. So this is the 1080 in the long direction, scaled up uh, using detailed, uh, preserved details too. And, you know, since it was downsampled so far, there really isn't much detail left. So let's compare that to um, the original um, the original image not upscaled. Okay, so we'll, we'll put that right on top. So this is this is the original original resolution of the image. Okay, so we've actually actually had to downsample it to to match this uh, the pixel dimensions here, but that's everything that was in the original. Okay, 
There is the downsampled version now re-upsampled using Preserve Details 2. And here's the Topaz version. So this is the upscaled version that was upscaled from this low res version. Okay. And now let's compare that with the original res. <laughs> okay. Now you, it may, it may be hard to see on the video, but the orig original res, which is the actual capture, basically, uh, doesn't look as sharp <laughs> as the topaz one. This is the topaz one. Look in this area down in here. Look at the fence and, and the grass down in here. So whatever topaz is doing, it's inferring detail where there isn't any. And it's competing with the native resolution of the image. Now, there's some areas where you know maybe we can we can think that the the original is a better match. But there's Topaz. There's the original. So Topaz has simplified some of the branch structure, but it's still it's sharper. Look look in this area down in here. The topaz is sharper, and even if I if I sharpen this, let's let's do uh, uh, let's do a, a a sharpen here. We'll do smart sharpen. Why not? Okay, that's pretty good. I'm really cranking the sharpening here, and now compare this still with topaz, right? So that's that's the original sharpened up. And you can see all the branches that show up. But look at this this bush down here. I, frankly, I think the topaz one looks better. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna move on to another. Let's look at that again. There's the original. This is the original sharpened, and it's kind of over sharpened. But I was, you know, there's the topaz version. There's the original low res version. So we've scaled it up with Topaz and it looks really pretty good. Here's another one, this new AI uh, sharpening uh, platform. It's called Magnific. It's a web-based platform. Here's Magnific. And uh, this is pretty interesting because it's really changing things, but it's giving kind of in some sense, it's more attractive what it's doing than the original. It's adding some extra detail and extra shapes and things. There's something very interesting going on. There's there's a couple different ways to use Magnific. Here's another example. This one uses a slightly different algorithm. And look at this compared to, uh, say, the Topaz version, which is really pretty good. Right, so the topaz is a lot closer to the original, but but this version has kind of more interesting detail. So what the hell is going on here? Let's let's look at um, the the um, the magnific. So magnific works. You drop an image into the this sort of thumbnail area. So let's bring back our low res version of this tree. So we drop an image there to upscale. And Magnific at the moment only goes two times. So we would have to upscale twice to get it up to the uh, four times resolution that we were experimenting with here. We have a, a choices for optimization. So the, it defaults to standard, which is kind of like it, it automatically picks some model to use. But we're going to say we want this we want to use film and photography uh, as our model. We want it to look photographic. We don't want it to look like an illustration. Uh, we can add a prompt, which is already kind of interesting. Like, all right, um, the default slider settings here for our creative, our HDR, and our resemblance, that's zero, right? Now, when it renders, when we click on upscale it will render it and puts it into this image into this window here and we can kind of go back and forth and see this is the upscaled version that's before upscaled 
and we see the settings here. So I think this one used nature and landscapes. Creativity zero, HDR zero, resemblance zero, and these are the default slider settings. And it's, it's, you know, it's preserving, it's doing some little changes. You can kind of see here, it's changing that flower pot a bit. Uh, but it's in general staying fairly close, but it's re-rendering everything at a higher resolution. Now, what, what gets to be interesting is you can change these engines. The default is automatic. There's Illusio, there's Sharpie and Sparkle. I quite like Sparkle. It adds some kind of extra kind of edginess to the image. Let's go up and see. Here's a here's something where we've added an HDR value of 10. Now, HDR, as far as Magnific is concerned, is uh, how much detail Magnific adds to the image when it upscales. So this one has added, look at the grass down here. It's really changed the grass and added like extra details that really weren't there. But it's still preserving overall the feeling. Look at the details it's adding to this little uh, kind of garage-like structure here. It's sort of adding extra detail. You can kind of see the fence here. Uh, and where it gets really interesting is when you really start playing around with the creativity in the HDR. So here's a totally wacky where everything's been cranked up to the max and you can kind of see it gets really wacky here creativity 10 hdr 10 resemblance we're keeping it at the default of zero but it's basically throwing the original out the window and giving us a really weird illustration here's here's one where creativity is only at five And that, that's still pretty, look at what it's doing to this foreground here. It's pretty wacky. But I actually kind of like, it added this distant landscape back there and replaced that house with something. Let's keep going here. It's, it gets, it's really pretty wacky. There's another, the foreground area is kind of interesting in this one. Here's where we crank the creativity down a bit but it's adding all that extra HDR detail because we crank that up to 10. Here's another one that's not quite as creative. So the idea here is that we can try out various things, various different approaches to scaling this and adding or not <laughs> adding detail. Let's go back here to Photoshop and um, so what I can do in Magnific is run a bunch of different samples, a different, a whole bunch of different ones and add them together. Let's, let's look at this. If I, I'll start at the bottom of this composite. Let me go ahead and size that up. So this was one of the creative ones i didn't really like the way this this cloud is sort of morphing into a mountain so i i looked for something with better clouds and so i added that in in this layer I add another layer here because i liked this foreground and what was i really wanted this kind of stuff in the background there i like the way it replaced put a distant landscape back there uh, and you just keep revising things. I didn't like this foreground in this particular layer, so I added that one in. Um, do a little repair of some of the, some of the, they, they put these interesting little, there's a faux signature down here. It's a little goofy AI stuff. It doesn't do text very well. And who told it to put an, a signature or a little information down here? I don't know. Those are easy to take out with Photoshop. And then I just used a gradient to darken down the foreground a little bit. And I quite like this, even though this is completely different than my, uh, my original here.
wild, huh? So anyway, there's a... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to leave you with this right now. These are very interesting platforms. Um, Magnific is... is uh, it's not cheap. It's about $39 a month if you do a, a subscription. But if you only need to do this you know, irregularly, every once in a while, you could always subscribe for one month and just use it and unsubscribe. Very easy. Uh, photo, uh, Topaz Photo AI is a bit more expensive. It's like $200. But at least if you're going to do this, uh, if all you really want to do is upscale something and have it look like the original, then uh, it's a better deal in the long run. If you're going to do that over and over again, you'll use up those $39 every month adds up quickly. So uh, something to consider. But I really think that this Magnific platform is really fascinating as a creative tool. And uh, I'll give you some example. Let's look at um, kind of a little slideshow here of sort of images I ran through Magnific to find an interesting creative interpretation of them. So let's go ahead and walk through this here. Here's the original image and magnificized. This is an infrared image. It's interesting to see what uh, Magnific does with this. And uh, because it's infrared, that what we're seeing is light on in the mountain area here is actually foliage that's reflecting infrared and glowing kind of brightly. And when we amp up the creativity in Magnific, it decides that that's snow on the mountain. It put a little moon up there. It's really fascinating. Here's another one from Scotland on the Isle of Skye. Beautiful castle here and when we magnificize it, it gets or sort of amped up in detail and interest. This is kind of interesting. This is in Iceland where you kind of walk behind this waterfall, really fascinating area. And we caught it right at sunset, really beautiful time of the day. And when we magnificize it, <laughs> it, it gets, I mean, you can go as far as this or pull back and get really different effects and combine them like I showed you in Photoshop. <clears throat> I love the sky here. The waterfall is a little funky, but it's still kind of cool. Here's Venice, the Grand Canal, looking at San Salute. And now we've really altered it and kind of punched up the contrast. It's kind of interesting. In Cuba, all right, so now we're going to see the whole thing about the AI and the hands here. <laughs> Pretty wild. Here's uh, in Turkey. This is a Hagia Sophia. Now it looks like something from a video game. Here's in Iceland, the witch's hat, really kind of a cool area. And amped up to the extreme. Horses on the beach. We do, uh, we do this every year at the Florida Birding and Photo Festival. Really amped up here. Another infrared capture, and uh, let's see what Magnific does with this. Really pretty fascinating. Here's another one from the Horses on the Beach. This is an infrared capture. Super dramatic. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. AI image rendering has been progressing at an astonishing rate, and it's already disrupting the photo industry. 
as artists, we need to be aware of the direction of the wind so we can harness the new without destroying the old. And I feel that AI is in the process of creating new forms of creative imaging that have a lot to offer if you are willing to experiment to participate in influencing the direction of this development. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye for now.